Hi Christians, welcome once again to our daily devotional grace every morning. Well done to all of you. This is already day 42. A word of thanks to everyone, especially our staff who has taken time and made effort to make these uh, devotions possible. Trust that you have been truly blessed by them. Today's reading is from Genesis 42. A severe famine had broken out everywhere except Egypt. This was a real famine and not a perceived food shortage that resulted in the recent panic buying. Jacob and his sons had no choice but to turn to Egypt, which was not on their bucket list of ideal holiday spots. And what awaited them was worse than anything they could have ever imagined. You see, Joseph and his brothers would be unexpectedly reunited. And the trauma of the past 20 years would soon be ignited. The key verse we want to look at is in verse uh, 28. Look, he exclaimed to his brothers, my money has been returned. It's here in my sack. Then their hearts sank. Trembling, they said to each other, what has God done to us? Normally, having your money refunded should be a good thing, right? But not here and not this time. Their hearts sank because they knew it was a trap. But note your insightful question. What has God done to us? Have you ever been set up by God before? It's like He's backed you up against the wall. And the only path is the one that you will only die, die, take. Perhaps because of a painful memory, a past hurt, a failure that continues to haunt you. But our Heavenly Father knows that an unsettled past is like the splinter that you have on your finger or your toe. Although the splinter is so small and almost invisible to our eye, and we'd rather forget it, it can become infected if it's not removed and dealt with. Our use of that part will also be inhibited, and every now and then it will hurt like crazy when you accidentally or forgetfully brush against it. That's why sometimes an innocent or an unintended word or action can trigger a disproportionate explosion sparked by a negative memory. I remember once, I overheard a compliment that was deservingly given to someone. For no apparent reason, I lashed out at the person giving the compliment, which shocked me as much as it did him. I regretted the second my words came out, but it revealed my insecurities, an inherent lack of self-worth which I had to repent before God. You see, God set me up to be in the wrong place and to be there at the wrong time. You know what the experts say about this pandemic? It will get worse before it gets better. This is also true when God wants to deal uh, with something that is deep-seated in our past. It may seem more painful or confusing than we can bear or understand but it is needful for our full recovery and healing. God sets us up to set us free. If we believe God to be good and wise, then we can believe that nothing happens to us without His loving consent. So church, don't fret. In this prolonged period at home, issues that might have remained hidden for a long time that we were reluctant to deal with could have resurfaced. But don't be discouraged or be disheartened. Maybe it's time and timely for these splinters to be removed. It will get worse before it gets better. But trust the God who has set us up. He will also set us free. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we confess that often we are more interested in the product than the process. We want to rush from where we are to where we want to be now. But we realize and we understand there are still many parts of us that you want changed to conform us to Jesus Christ. And you are our grand weaver. And so that nothing in our lives, every detail of our lives has been carefully crafted by you so that there is nothing accidental and nothing incidental. Take out all the splinters that remain in our hearts and in our lives at the right timing, God, so that you can set us free to serve you fully. And for all these things, we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go through the application questions with your family and allow God to speak His healing and freedom into your lives. 
Until tomorrow, keep your eye on the Lord and see what He's doing in your life today. God bless you.